Hi everyone. Today I'm running through the Escora iPad app. So I've gone and just pre-installed it from the Apple App Store here on the iPad. Uh, you can get the same thing from the Google Play Store if you're on an Android tablet or device. And Escora works across any iPhone, iPad or Android device. I'm going to go and launch Escora now. First thing you see that it's really easy to get up and running. So when you give your guys, mobile guys, all you need to do is create a login and allocate a PIN code to them. Once entered, a scorer remembers their details. So all they have to do is enter their PIN code again and they can jump straight back into the app. I'm going to go enter our PIN code now for our test system. And you'll see that it's taken me directly to my job list for the day. There's no other menus, nothing else to get in their way. It's also important to point out that every interaction with a scorer is pushing up my GPS position and updating my location that's visible on the web. You see the job list here has a lot of features. We're not going to go through them all in the video today, but you can see from each item in the schedule, I can tell exactly when and where I have to be. I can also see the customer details and the full address, and also lets me see the first line of the job description. So if there's anything important, you can enter it in the top line there, and you'll know your team can see it without having to drill into the job details. From here, we can also turn this view into a map view and that will display where we are in relation to our jobs. It will also enable us to do a few things like work out a route to the actual job address and that will just go back to the, the mapping environment working on a device. So in this case we're on an iPad so we're going through Apple Maps. We can also kick off and hit navigate there and that will take us off to a turn by turn. Uh, I'm just going to go straight back to our job list. Another feature of the job list is you can swipe right and that will give you the extra information. So you can see just that job on a map. You can jump into the customer details or you can record that you're starting travel. So I'm going to tap start travel for now. And that's recorded that I'm starting travel to job eight. It's also updated my status on the web as well as pushed up my GPS position. Tapping on the job now will take me into the full job details. And from here I can see what is my booking time, what's the address, other things like the priority, job numbers, if there's initial quotation. I can see at the moment there's nothing added onto my job, my total price is zero. I can see the type of work and also the full descriptions come through from what was entered in the office. I can tap and go into the description and from here I can either type everything in fully or I can hit add phrase and build up my common list of phrases from the site. Once that's complete, and I can hit back, and that's been updated. Just going through the items on the, on the left-hand pane here, uh, I can basically check into the job. So that check-in basically stops my travel and marks that I've arrived on site in the job. It also creates my timeshare entry as well as determining my labor on the job. Tapping on supplies, that will show everything that's currently allocated to my job. So any items, any parts, any materials, any kind of cost or prices to items will appear here. From here you can also add write-ins, so if there's a special thing just for this job that's not part usual prices, you can do that from here. You can also add on kit items, so you can build up a list of pre-builds and items and jobs. It will come through from add supplies, basically take you to your price list. So from here I'll just bring in a supplier price list from MM Electrical, but that could be anything through there. And it really depends and it demonstrates how important it is to categorize your price as well and also break it up into favorite areas. To add anything to my job, all I need to do is just tap and hit done. And those items are automatically added. From here, I can, if I need to, quickly adjust quantities. I can use the steppers here just to adjust that way. I can tap into it and override the quantity if it is a much larger quantity. In the same way, depending on permissions, I can also override the pricing. So I'm going to save that for now. If I needed to, I can create POs from here and email them off as well. Drilling through on the side, next area across there is labor. And you can see that's recording the time for my check-in and it will record, if you have multiple team members or multiple bookings over multiple days, they'll all be recorded here. As I can see I've got no call-out fee, so I'm just going to go add one now. And the lab will automatically calculate when I've finished. Equipment area, that's if you're recording equipment that you're servicing for customers. 
So maybe a particular piece of aircon plant or a photocopy or something like that where you want to track that service history. This is where you add it and where you can view the details of it. Jumping through, finalize shows the information. So the current current value of labor and callouts on the job, the current value of supplies, the total job price, depending on your pricing method that's being used. It also enables you to see what is the checklist that's been set up. So for this particular job, I've got a standard job checklist and it's saying me there I have to complete, I will say I've completed the items before I can actually sign off on the job. Drawing through into attachments, from here I can see anything that's been uploaded onto that job from the office or I can see and take job photos. I'm just going to go ahead and tap. From here it's, it's basically saying that that photo doesn't exist on the device. I can hit yes and it'll pull it down for me. And from that you can manipulate as you would normally. In the same way you can tap and view uh, other PDF items. So that can be your plans for the site. And from that you can view, zoom, and exit. Come back. Notes, so you can basically record notes. If you have a particularly wrong long, long running job, this can be particularly helpful. This allows you to keep track of things that you wouldn't otherwise record in the job description or work undertaken. Things that you might not necessarily want to flow onto the invoicing side of things. Forms is the areas where you would add any kind of JSA or site specific risk assessments or a home checklist, those kind of things. You can create an ad from here. Create next is where you can generate a follow-up job if you have to. So it can be you're finishing this job, but you know you'll have to be back in a certain number of weeks or months. That can be created from here. Right now I'm going to go ahead and just finish off my checklist of items. And one thing you can see is I'm going through a scorer. It's not a fixed process. You can quickly jump between supplies or labor or equipment. Labor, I'm going to go check out. And I can see from there, it's actually added on my labor item and it's recorded my check-in, check-out and timesheet times. You can override these times. So the currently it shows 0.25, that was set as my minimum, but I can easily adjust that up or down depending on how I need to in the circumstance. And again, all of this is controllable by permissions. So now I've got my labor on my job, I can go back to my finalize. I'm happy with the different labor and call out charges, supply charges, the job pricing, and the job here can be signed off as complete. So that the process can end at this point, or I can go on and create an invoice from this. Right now I'm going to go off and sign off on the job. So this screen will basically display if you have a sign off clause, total job value. Uh, you can collect the customer signature, or it can be the signature of the technician, depending on your preference. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just generate invoice for this job as well. And it's pulled through everything that was there on my job. So I've got the job description, the work undertakings come through. I can get a client sign off on this. And it's got the sign off clause entered there as well. So I can accept. From here, we can also take payments on site. So currently we do support the eWay gateway. So if you're hooked up to eWay, you can record the credit card details and you will get a real time response in the process actually being taken, which is the payments going through. Right now, I'm gonna leave that as is and basically go back to my job list. And you can see the job list with my current filters is showing only the scheduled in progress jobs. So as that job has been completed and closed off, it's basically gone on my list. And now I can proceed to go on to the next job on my list. Uh, in terms of synchronization, it will synchronize up to the office. And that's one of the important things about a score is it can work completely disconnected. So everything I've been stepping through will work exactly that same way even if I had no internet signal at all. Right now I'm going to go ahead and just force the sync so I can update all the details in the office. And this will trigger a scorer to basically get everything that's changed from their scorer server and send up everything that's changed from my iPad. That's synchronizing now. And that's basically synchronized. It's pushed up the job details. That job would show up as complete on the website. Uh, the invoice would come through as well, any payments I'd taken, and that's it. Thanks for watching.